Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I did this set right here. It came out so gorgeous and I'm really excited to show you. So if you would like to see how I did it, then please keep watching. Okay, you guys, so we are jumping right into the video. This time I'm going to make it a little more in depth, a little bit more showing my secrets or letting you guys know what I use and things like that. So I'm starting out with my pink nail stands. I get these from Amazon and I always have them linked down below. It's under a little section in my description box that says my essential press on nail products um, or something like that. And they're just these pink nail stands that I get from Amazon. They're really affordable and um, I just got the pink ones but they come in a whole bunch of different colors. Next thing you're going to need is the putty. So the putty is what holds the nail and the stand together so that they don't fall apart or fall when you're uh, decorating your nails and the putty is the one that I use is called the Gorilla Glue brand. It's the best of the best putty. I have used like at least six different brands of putty. I've been doing press-ons for about two years now and I really 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 love the Gorilla Glue putty. Your nails will not fall off of the stand. That was a problem I always used to have and there is also a blue brand of putty but that putty will stain the back of your nails sometimes or get really stuck. So that doesn't happen with this brand. The next thing you need is the nail tips. The ones I'm using in this video in particular there are the extra long tips from um, Tulip Nail Supply. I use these just because they're really nice, they're long, uh, but now everywhere sells them. You can literally get them on Etsy, you can probably get them on Amazon, you can get them on Enail Couture, which is where I get a lot of my other tips. Um, so yes, I do get these ones from Tulip Nail Supply, but I also get them from Enail Couture. And um, you can use any type of brand of tips because I'm going to be using so many layers of gel. The thickness um, of these tips is already really good. They're not bendy, but because of I'm because of how many layers I'm going to use, the nails are going to be so so strong. So you saw me just cut them down right there. The next thing that I'm doing is I am going to be buffing them. So these nails I'm actually making for a real customer. This is someone that ordered these nails from me. So I'm going ahead and making them the best I can, and I'm going to really try my best to replicate it just like the photo. And I'm actually going to show you guys a picture of the nails uh, in a bit of what she wanted me to recreate for her. So I'm taking this little mini buffer and I'm buffing away the shine on the nails. This will just help my base coat stick better so that I have a nice layer, um, a nice gritty layer for the gel polish to stick to. This will help you with your adhesion so that your gel polish doesn't chip. Some people tell me that you don't even need to buff, but I just buff be just because I feel like it's worth it, you know, just to have that extra layer of security. And after buffing, I always make sure that I dust off my nails. You always want to dust the nails off and get rid of all the little particles that are left from buffing because you do not want to contaminate your base coat with little particles um, like your little base coat brush. So as you could see, I dusted it off. Now I'm using my base coat. I'm using a Model 1's base coat here. I really love the Model 1's base and top coat. I get it on Amazon. This bottle looks different because it was from a collection, but their base and top coat, it has been my favorite lately. I've been using it like crazy. Um, so yes, you can go on Amazon and purchase that. It's really, really good. And I just go in with one to two layers depending on what nail set I'm going to be creating that day. So because this set today is using um, a little bit less layers because I'm doing a matte top coat, I'm going ahead with two layers of base coat gel. This is going to make sure the nails are so, so sturdy. I literally think you guys, no one has ever, ever, ever broken one of their press on nails for, that has ordered from me. And I've been doing press ons for two years. I think it's only happened probably one time and that was when I was a beginner making press-ons and I, that was like my first week making press-ons ever um, and that was the only time what someone's nail has broken and that was because I was using some thin tips and I didn't do base coat and I didn't really know how to work with it and they were also extra long nails so yes you guys that just goes to show that the techniques that I use are pretty good and people never break nails with the way that I do it so before we begin starting this is what she wanted as you could see, it has the kind of minty color with the 3D flower and the little gold rhinestones. I was so excited to do this set because it looks so simple, but this is one of those sets that just 
really looks so elegant and pretty i was so excited for it so i'm starting off with two coats of rise nails number 112 this is the perfect base color to match that acrylic set of nails um if you guys have already subscribed to me then you guys know that kind of one of my specialties i would say is making press on nails look identical to an acrylic set just because i know that there's a lot of different things that can uh like determine what makes a press on set look quote unquote good or that makes it look like an acrylic set um the nude color that you use the techniques that you use it all really matters and that's what my channel is dedicated to is to showing you guys how you can get that perfect seamless look that will make your nails look uh that will make your press-ons look like you just like came out of a salon whether it's you or your client or your customer or if you do gel x this is also catered towards people that do gel x because um i know a lot of people get gel x because it's a little bit better for your natural nails and also um the gel x nail art is uh kind of like more based off of gel polish and acrylic is more like acrylic you can use colored acrylic for ombres and things like that and for pre for gel x you can't so yes that is what what my videos are catered to people that like doing press-ons and people that also like doing gel x and want to learn new techniques or new designs for their nails so yes you guys i'm being very chatty in this video because i had mentioned um, earlier in the beginning that i wanted to be more in depth and i kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit more about my techniques and what i use for every single uh set that i do so yes i'm doing two quotes of this this is one of my fave fave nudes ever i do have a video on really pretty nude colors from amazon as well if you're looking for something that's like easy to like that will sh ship right away and things like that but i will be uh putting the names of everything that i use in the description box down below i try to do that for every single video so that you guys know what i'm always using and yeah you guys i'm just so excited to share this set with you the next thing that I'm going to be doing is grabbing my minty color and I'm going to be customizing it to try to make it exactly like the photo or as close as I can get it. I'm using this minty color from Nail Addict. Uh, their new name is Nail Reserve LA. In case you guys didn't know, I love, love, love their stuff. I'm always talking about their things because I have so much of their colors and I genuinely use them like for every set. So um, I'm grabbing some white from McCart and I'm just mixing it in with this uh gel polish the minty one to make it lighter more like the photo uh in the photo that set is done with pure acrylic you could just tell because uh it's, it was like a tiktok like they were showing their process i also do acrylic so that's why i can tell like when someone sends me a photo i can tell if it's acrylic or gel or what it is so um yes that is what the photo is and i'm trying to replicate the color exactly or as close as i can i feel like this color looked really nice so i'm going ahead and getting started on my french tips so there's french tips on i believe two nails and I'm going to be doing the A method. This is a new method I've been doing. My French tips have been coming out more flawless ever since I started doing this method. So I grab a really long brush. You want to use a 25 millimeter brush or preferably a little bit longer if you have it. Um, or if they make them, I think they only make it up to like 30 millimeters though. So 25 millimeter or 30 millimeter nail art brush is what you're looking for. And I love, love, love using a really thin brush. So I customize my brushes by, I just buy like the regular ones, but they're usually really thick and I don't like a really thick brush because you can't get as seamless, um, like lines so um i cut mine a little bit so i cut some of the bristles off so that the bristles end up being thinner um and that's what i do for all of my brushes that i need that i want to be like skinnier so that i can get better lines so i fill it in with this afterwards and this doesn't take a long time and it's honestly really therapeutic for me to fill in the french tips with this little tiny brush i don't know what it is but um it's like so satisfying and as you can see the french tip came out so flawless because of that a method that i used i really really love it uh, if you guys are having troubles with your French tips, highly recommend trying it with a thin, long brush and trying this A method. So you do two lines, one line uh, going up and another line going up, but you do not want to connect the lines unless you want your French tip to be really, really skinny. You know what I mean? Like if you want the smile line to be really thin, then you can connect the lines, but I don't connect mine because I want like a perfect smile line, if you know what I mean. Like I don't want it to be so skinny up at the top like the the c curve i don't want it to be so thin so i don't connect the lines and it just creates the perfect perfect shape for every single nail and i just go ahead and kind of keep doing it until i feel like it looks good and it just really really helps me get a perfect uh application i guess you could say 
and yeah you guys so oh my gosh i don't know why this is so satisfying like i literally watch it while i'm talking and it just looks so satisfying so anyways yeah you guys that's what i'm doing there and then i'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in Okay, and since this is a matte design, I'm going to be grabbing my Beatles top coat. Uh, this is the matte top coat, and it is really, really good. It is my favorite next to the Koopa matte top coat. The Koopa matte is my number one favorite, but I run out of that one like crazy. It's actually kind of weird. It's like their bottles aren't all the way full or something because I run out of them so fast. This Beatles one has lasted me longer and I've used it more. But uh, whenever you're doing a matte set, you want to make sure to do all your gel polish work first and then go ahead and put your matte top coat on top. And um, it's just going to really help you out, especially if you're doing 3D flowers and rhinestones afterwards. So if you're doing rhinestones, you want to make sure to put the rhinestones on top of the matte top coat. Just because uh, it's going to be kind of hard to do the matte all around the rhinestones, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not the same like when you're doing a glossy set. With the glossy set, you can do the the top coat after you apply rhinestones and it's no problem because you can go around them but for a matte top coat if you get even a little bit on the rhinestones it's going to matte them out and it's going to take away from the shine so uh yes that is what i wanted to say really quickly that's what i always do and i always make sure to get the whole entire nail uh always double check your nail in the lamp in the light before you cure it because you want to make sure your whole nail is covered in the matte top coat you don't want to leave any shiny parts because then you're going to have to go over it again and then it's going to be lumpy so yes that's what um, i always make sure to do and with a matte top coat i always make sure to cure twice as well and this is what it looks like afterwards oh my gosh you guys they're so gorgeous i don't know what it is about a matte top coat but it's literally my favorite. I love a matte top coat. It's like, oh my gosh, so pretty to me. So um, I feel like matte makes everything stand out more, which is so, like, I feel like that's so true. And I actually saw someone on TikTok Live saying that the other day about their nails as well. They were saying that matte makes everything stand out, especially hand-painted art. And I totally agree. So I'm going to be grabbing this color by uh, Nail Supply Glamour. And uh, this color is really close to what I need. So I was just going to swatch them for you guys and show you. Uh, what the colors look like the ones that I chose that I feel like could work for my 3d flower for this set So this one was first. Uh, it is very very nice. You could see my bead drew, uh, dried pretty fast That's because I already put acetone into my monomer because I knew that I was going to be using it for 3d work So that's another tip if you're going to be doing any type of 3d flowers and you've been struggling with it I really struggled with it as well and uh, the key is to put some acetone into your monomer so I grabbed these three colors here and I believe I end up using this one called pool party I'm not sure I think I end up mixing them yeah I end up mixing them so I start out with pool party by uh, not polish it's like almost identical to what I need and then I mixed it with just a little bit of the lighter color so I'm just trying to get that perfect combination and trying to see what will work best and um yeah so i just keep doing that until i figure out what color i need and yeah you guys that's pretty much what i'm doing and the brush that i'm going to be using is a tiny one i think it's from amazon i'm not sure but i'm going to see right now in the video what i end up using 
yeah it's from amazon that little brush is the pana kalinsky uh 3d art brush i'll link it down below for you guys it's really really good i actually do like it because it's really skinny so it helps you get really perfect flowers so the key is that you want to have um a really tiny little bead and make sure it's not too watery but putting acetone into your monomer will really help out there's no specific ratio for how much monomer to acetone you want but you just want to do a few squirts of acetone and keep trying out your beads trust me you'll be able to tell when there's too much acetone or there's too little acetone you'll definitely be able to notice because the beads will dry either way too fast or way too they'll be way too watery and your uh, flower petals will be running all over the place so i always make sure to try uh try it out and make sure that the consistency is exactly what i need and this really tiny, tiny brush really helps you get those perfect beads so that your beads aren't too big. I don't know if you guys have tried doing 3D flowers and you might get discouraged because your petals come out really huge. I don't know if that's happening to you guys or if that's happened to you before because that's what happened to me a lot of times. My When I first started out, my beads were way too big and I noticed that the flowers were just big and like... They looked weird and they didn't look as natural. I kind of want the flowers to look almost like a little realistic, if you know what I mean. So, um, yes, using a really tiny brush is very, very key, very essential. So, um, I'm just going ahead and making the petals. As you can see, they're coming out very nice and thin. They look very delicate and pretty. That's really what I wanted to go for. And I just ended up totally loving the way the set came out. So as you can see, I'm kind of just pressing down using the belly of the brush to spread out the flower petals and make them really, really seamless and make sure that the petals aren't chunky because I want it to mimic natural flower petals and natural flower petals are very, very paper thin. So yeah, and if you need any extra acrylic, like if you have parts that are too sheer, uh, like I had here, I added a little tiny bead and it just made it a little bit better. So you can definitely add on as well. I've also seen people do like two-tone flowers where you can get one color and get, like for example, this flower, I'm doing a light like mint color. You could grab a darker mint color, like a teal, and add it in the center of the flower and it'll give it a really pretty gradient. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on how to do that as well. Um, I've actually never done it before, but I know I could do it so I could just show you guys how. But yeah, so I'm going to be doing the same thing on the other hand. Okay, once you're done with the 3D flowers, you're going to go ahead and add your rhinestones. So the key to this, uh, personally, what I like to do is I like to add different size rhinestones. So I believe here I'm adding an SS8, an SS6, and an SS4, um, little groups of each one, just because I want there to be a very nice gradient of the rhinestones. I'm going to be using my Zule's Bling Glue, like always. I always use this glue, and um, it's the best of the best. It really is. It's very, very strong, so you need to be careful and use a mask when you're... Uh, using it so I'm gonna grab the SSA and place it in the center these are golden rhinestones I'll link them down below and I'm gonna be doing this little swirly method where um, each side the rhinestones are going up and down you want to start out with the biggest sizes first and then go into a gradient of big to small this is really gonna make um, or break your bling placement trust me it makes a huge difference when you use different sized rhinestones it makes your set look so elegant and put together and it makes your bling placement look like you really tried so hard on it I don't know how to explain it but if you do this method then you know what I mean it just makes a difference I can never use the same sizes um, for example in the photo that I showed you guys of the set that we're recreating the a creator did use the same size rhinestones for both sides and I feel like it just looks so much more elegant when you go from big to small it makes it look more natural So 
So now I'm going to be doing the same thing to the bottom. I'm just going the opposite way and going from bigger rhinestone to the tiniest one. And it just makes it look so, so pretty. I love this design, you guys. Oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous. When I saw this set in person, like when I was finished, I was like, I literally want to keep this. It's so pretty. But I'm also going to be adding rhinestones on the thumb and the pinky as well. Uh, and I'm just going to be going from the bigger size to the smaller one. Same thing, but I'm just going to be adding a little, uh, a few of them, just like the photo. So so um, yeah, I, she just wanted me to recreate it as best as I could and in a long square shape. So that's what we're doing here. But the only difference is I did make this uh, set a little more of a tapered square rather than like a wider square because that's what she wanted. So yes, this is what it looks like. And you always want to make sure to go in with your nail glue dryer after you use Zule's glue. That will really help your gems stay put and it'll make them um like not move around because this glue does not dry under the uv lamp it dries regular so you want to use the spray to make it dry faster just because it helps you um it, yeah basically just helps so that the gems don't move around and trust me you do need it it is essential so i always make sure to link that as well whenever i talk about it because it's definitely something that you need when you're using that glue and i'm going to be doing the same thing on the other hand except going the opposite way just because uh you know just so it flows better Okay, you guys, and if you watch me, you know what my last step is. I always make sure to grab my dust collector and a nail file, just a regular nail file. Uh, this is a 100-100 grit, I believe, or 180, and I always make sure to file the edges of the nails. This just really brings the shape together. This is, I think this is literally the main reason why my loyal customers keep ordering for me is because of the shape i know of course it's because of the design work that i do as well because like they can they're very i'm very versatile i can pretty much do whatever you want but um the main thing is the shaping so this will definitely make your sets look so 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 nice i really always make sure to do this the nail file looks used because it is used i use it for all of my press on sets so once a nail file is already getting uh used more i just go ahead and toss it and get a new one but i always make sure to dust the nails off after I'm done and always buff the edges as well to get rid of any excess little um, like you know shavings from the nail file and then this is going to be the final result I slow motioned it for you guys you can see it is so 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 pretty you guys oh my gosh this is what it looked like in person it's just so gorgeous and then I have the other video that I had in the beginning right here this is just the slow motion version and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like and please 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 don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already I have so many more videos coming for you guys and I hope you learned something new so have a great day and I'll see you in the next one bye